This is our new 10 foot snow pusher that we're gonna put on the new tractor I'm gonna show you. A new to us, but used 332 G model, John Deere skid steer. We've got a 6175 here that we did trade the 6410 in on. You wanna say hi to the camera for the first time this year? Yeah, hi camera. Hi camera. Well, internet, I've been gone a lot lately and I've been very fortunate to meet some new people and see some new things, but as you can see, we're getting down to only a few feet of snow here in West Central Minnesota. I'm looking at the 2230 field cultivator. This is a digger and we're gonna need new points on it. So much snow in my boots, I gotta get out of here. Local dealers having a 10% off parts sale, so I'm going around checking to see what I need. I know we need a full set of shovels, shovels, sweeps, points, whatever you want to call them for the digger, field cultivator, whatever you want to call it. And we traded our 2730 Deep Ripper for a new 2730 Deep Ripper, so that's going to come with brand new points for that. So the next thing to check over here would be the filters in the parts room. Now I know that we're going to need to change the oil in the 9560 and the 8360. Luckily those take the same fuel filters of which I've got two of each one here because there's two on each. I've got 9560 oil and an 8360 oil. However, I like to keep that stock up so I'm going to grab the parts numbers off those, write them down, call the guys at Deer and tell them what I need. Hey Mark, Zach Johnson, got a parts order here for you. Jim, hey, any interest in uh, shuffling some trucks around with me this afternoon? Well, I can see I got a package here. Get him down here. We've got a special delivery coming. I'll have to show you guys what that is. Oh, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions on this. Yes, we got a different skid loader. This one is not new. It's new to us. It's a much bigger size. It is a deer. And I, all I've driven my whole life is a gale, so I'm trying to figure out still how to drive this thing. These short forks are not gonna work. I need access to the longer ones. There's one. All right, there it is. This is our new 10 foot snow pusher that we're gonna put on the new tractor I'm gonna show you in just a bit here. This is the HLA 4500. I actually got this from uh, Courtney at Good Works Tractors. They sell every kind of attachment you can imagine from the bigger stuff like this on down to uh, like the garden size and compact tractor stuff. Also got a set of forks for the 6175 sitting in the shed right now. So those will come in handy sometimes. I did get the blade on it so that I can back pull snow here. Goodworks has a YouTube channel as well, so I figured, hey, why not support a fellow YouTuber and order that thing from them? So we got that up here. We're gonna keep in touch with them. Maybe they'll have some other handy stuff we come across. So for the first time in my life, I actually wish it would snow, but now it won't because we seriously upgraded our snow removal system. So now we've got the snow pusher to go on the front end here. We've got a 6175 here that we did trade the 6410 in on. This is actually my tractor. This is my first tractor that Zach owns right here. And this is my new snow blower. This is a Lofness nine foot blower. I would have liked to get the 10 foot, but then you got to move up to the industrial model. And then it gets quite a bit more expensive. Nine foot will easily do what we need it to do for the time being. As I mentioned, this is my first tractor. Uh, this is the replacement for our 6410, which was a 98 or 99 model. This is a 2018, actually only has about 200 hours on it. so. Pretty solid upgrade, not very used. Uh, there was a school in central Minnesota that used it for uh, maintenance and snow removal themselves. The lease came back and we ended up buying this tractor off of them. Like a kitten out of milk pail. Compared to the 6410, the interior here, this thing is a Cadillac. I've got the fold down buddy seat, which I'll probably have up most of the time unless Isla joins me to move a bunch of snow. Of course, we got a little bit of storage underneath there. We got this plush seat. We got a much nicer controls up here. Uh, it does have the 4600, which is still booting up. You can see it there. And it's got the new console here over onto the side with the new joystick for the buckets. Also, got sunroof. It is the first piece of machinery we actually own on this farm. 
with the diesel exhaust fluid. So we'll see how that goes. We're gonna have to get some sort of setup in here to deal with that because chances are we're gonna have more machines that have that. I have never claimed that I own all the machinery around this farm. I'm 35 years old. If you guys think I could own all the machinery around this farm, you're crazy. Uh, but this tractor puts me at about 20 to 25% total of the machinery on this farm is mine. Certainly not debt free, uh, but I'm making the payments on it. I own it. I pay the maintenance, everything else that comes along with it. I also proudly own two of these grain bins, one which you can't see, and one being the new wet bin there behind the dryer, and two of the conveyors in that system. Along with 25% of the trucks and trailers, and one piece of land. I own 133 acres myself, that's mine, but when it comes to the actual farming of the land, 40% of the land we farm is my operation. So I'm renting a higher percentage, and dad owns a higher percentage. I'm not gonna try too hard to explain it all. This is truly a family operation. I mean, we're all involved in our own ways. This thing is broke down, like most farms, in a complicated manner. It almost started. Hey, in that truck's defense, it's been sitting there a while. In the meantime here, some of you are probably curious exactly what we got for a skid steer. This is a new to us, but used 332G model, John Deere skid steer. We definitely needed to go up on size. Uh, the gale we had was just, was a little bit small for moving around heavy chemical totes and heavy seed totes. This thing isn't gonna have a problem with any of that. I barely know how to drive this thing because I'm used to the gale, so I definitely don't know how to tell you guys how many hours are on it. This one here is dad's purchase. He actually bought this about six weeks ago, but you'll see it get used a lot this summer. A lot of odd job stuff around the farm here, unloading seed and chemical. Those are the biggest things we use them for. Oh, and I lied to you guys. That takes Def as well. Hey, I'm wondering what your guys' special is today. We are all out of our special. You're all out of it. Well, then I will do a uh, turkey deluxe burger with fries. I finished my turkey burger just in time to let FBN Todd in the shop here. We gotta hide in the shop because Anna's out doing some dog training because we're training her essentially to attack Todd every time he shows up. Todd is my local FBN rep and he's been a bit upset with me because I've been very, very slow in uploading my data to the network. But that's only because the data systems we used last year, not involving FBN, had a lot of problems. I'm gonna keep those unnamed. I would keep them unnamed. But they had a lot of problems. Plus we ran three combines. So we've got like 18 different monitors that the data is on. So Todd's gonna fix that all for me. That's right. I'm this is local service. Data genius. That's right. Data? Data or data? Data. data? data, okay. Tom, how's it going? You remember when we ran that 780 out here? Where did that data go? I got one last thing that we gotta do before you leave. I noticed a problem with the back of your truck, right? Over in this area here. We can fix it. Do we put the, the new sticker here or, or here or, or over in that corner? What do you wanna do here? Whatever you wanna do. I better put it in the other corner. There we go. Even things out a bit. All right, let's get this truck started. Oh yeah. This truck needs a bottom end in the engine. It needs rings and bearings, all kinds of stuff that I'm not gonna dig into. I've done it on small block Chevys, but I'm not gonna do it on this cat motor. When it comes to a spendy diesel engine like this, I'm gonna leave that to the professionals. We'll try truck number two. Nothing to it. You wanna say hi to the camera for the first time this year? Yeah, hi camera. There it is, you're gonna have to get used to it again now. Now if all goes according to plan, I'm just gonna spin this thing around and back the trailer back in here, drop the trailer and take the truck to a different shop. Jim's saying no. He says wait. Must be that top. Brake stuck? Must be the top one because the bottom one, I watched that and you can see that move. Just had to hit it with a hammer. Sometimes that's best. Impact technology, right? So the problem we're having with this truck, I'm not sure how to explain. When you're backing up, the traction control kicks in and it doesn't let you back up. Like it, it, it locks on a brake or something. I don't know, I don't know what the deal is. I just know it cripples the truck in the yard.
we couldn't figure it out we're gonna take it to the shop I'm guessing it's uh, it's not major it's not inside the rear end it's it's uh, mechanically on the outside of the rear end so they'll figure it out different shop different shops do different things split it up there's my chauffeur didn't bring his limo well thanks Jim hey Anna Anna did you get did you get trained in she's not paying attention what are you doing in here Building a bicycle jump. Like father, like son, I guess. Kind of want to clean up the shed a little bit as long as I'm out here and I'm going. It's not supper time yet. I got a pile of Yankum ropes here with nylon shackles and everything. Down in there, there is a rope rated for, I believe, 175,000 pounds. So, if we get stuck this year, we're going to have a rope. Also got this sweet Thunder Creek Grizzly cooler, but I don't have a reason to fill it full of soda and go to a party with it right now so I'll set it in the break room here because I'm gonna need that thing pretty soon you know when the weather gets nice and I have to hydrate these Yankum ropes are sweet they're way safer than using a chain and they're a kinetic energy rope so that when you use them they stretch out it's almost like I'm looking forward to getting stuck but I'm not I just like to find the silver lining in things, you know? If you're interested in checking those ropes out, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description. You can check them out. They make all kinds of different size ropes and, and different recovery stuff. So check that out if you're into that. I also got a new tractor mat here. This is gonna go in the 6175. Oh, ew. Somebody already got dirt in my tractor. Well, it lays down in there nicely. One thing a lot of you guys probably don't know about me was that I grew up as an avid snowmobiler. Another fun fact about me, I broke my hip when I was 19, 20 years old on a snowmobile. I raced snowcross for a couple years, did not get injured in snowcross, but as soon as I quit, I ended up having a wreck and I broke my pelvis, left myself crippled for about two months. <laughs> Back when I raced snowcross, I always ran CNA Pro Skis, which was kind of the, the ski to run. And then I recently found out that May West Manufacturing, one of the people that I work with a lot when it comes to farm stuff and making plastic stuff for, we put a lot of their stuff on our headers, uh, but for everything agriculture, we got more stuff we're gonna work with this year. They actually own CNA Pro Skis. So, of course, I had to get my own custom CNA Pro Skis made for my sled. See the toys, they get worked on over here in the toy shop. I had to get a set of these skis for the girls as well, for their little 120 sled. They make them for that too. That couldn't leave the girls out. We'll let that thing thaw out a little bit because Onyx has been running it around. What is, hey, Anna, Anna, what is hanging from you? What do you got there? Did you get trained to be a killer? Hmm? We joke about it a lot, but Anna's actually being trained to eat people. She's a sweet girl. She won't eat you unless we tell her to. Speaking of eating, my supper just got home.